Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd of Those My Friends, uh, yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do this ornamental granny sweater. I just wanted to make sure I understood the pattern. It took me about three false starts in order to understand this pattern, but once I got it into my thick, um, unused brain, <laughs> Um, it became a, a lot easier for me. The color changing is something that you can deal with. Um, you can also uh, just keep it a solid color if it makes your life easier as well. So what I decided to do is that I went to my collection and I found up a beat up ball of, a, I think this is Karen Cakes. And uh, it's got some great colors in it that I want to kind of do a sweater with instead of uh, just whatever, you know, use what you have. So I'm a loose crochet and if you tell anybody I'll deny it okay so I'm gonna go down to a four millimeter size F as in Frank <laughs> uh, crochet hook I'm also gonna use a tapestry needle da, da, da. and I'm doing that because I'm gonna show you a few deviations from this pattern that I felt was quite helpful for me the thing about this tutorial work is I'm allowed to do that so if you want to follow the instructions as written you can go ahead and do that and we're going to get ourselves started. And it actually is calling for a four and a half millimeter size US 7 uh, crochet hook. And just basically uh, A, B, C, D, and E. There's different colors as you can see. So the pattern looks big, but it's actually not. It's just because the color breakdowns are being provided to you. So don't overcomplicate the system. So without further ado, we're going to get started right away. You can see I've made some notes. We're going to deviate right off the top and get that tapestry needle. It'll be your best friend today. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So before I begin, um, I don't know when I last used this yarn, but I'm going to just deconstruct it very much like an ogo and just getting the colors to be in sync with each other. You know, making this dog's breakfast look even worse. <laughs> Um, a lot of people do this though. They end up buying stuff like this and then they separate the colors and put it in their own order and use it wherever they feel like it. So I just need four colors today. You can do as many or as little as you want to. You can do a solid one. You know, there's no crochet police as far as I know because I'd be arrested already. So let's do that. Deconstruction complete and let's begin the first section. So I'm going to begin right away with the deviation. I'm only going to chain six instead of eight. I felt like it was a little loose for me. Again, we will not talk about such things because it's nonsense. And you are going to begin and do a beginning chain. So I'm going to say chain six, but if you want to chain eight, go ahead. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you can go seven and eight if you wish. And then I want you to join this to the beginning chain and slip stitch to form a ring. I felt it looked a lot, it looked better to my point of view. You could decide you're the artist. Let's officially do round number one. In round number one, I'm deviating. So you can chain one and put eight single crochets in, or you're just gonna stick your hook into the middle center, grab the yarn and pull through, and pull through two. That is considered one, so there's not a chain one there. So I want, I still want eight single crochets, so this is considered one go right up over that top of that um, straggler too. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, I'm not slip stitching. Here's what I'm gonna do. I've gone over the straggler, so I'm gonna just cut that out and get that out of my way. But I want you, look at these scissors. <laughs> My primaries go awry. I want you to cut this strand a little bit longer, and I don't want to use. I don't want to slip stitch. And I know from my amigurumi days, because I really suck at that too, is that I realized that when you do a slip stitch, it looks like sin. So if sin had to look like, you should see my slip stitching when I do amigurumi. And what I want you to do is count the eighth one back. So one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go to the eighth one. And I want you to go across the stitch. Okay, so I'm just going across and just pull on it. And it's gonna pull it shut. But wait, there's more. I know, I sound like an infomercial. See where this one's coming out of? I want you to go back through that and just go down in. And so that strand came out of that hole, went around and locked back in. Are you learning something today? And you, what you're going to do is you're going to pull tight. Ah, look how pretty that is. So before I fold it the other way, I want to secure this in. 
So I'm just going to come in the inside and I'm going to cause it to knot. And give it a good reef so it gets down in size. This will be on the inside of the sweater. And then I'm just going to weave in the ends back and forth gently. Okay, and then the second time and one more time. And the third time is the charm. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for my attaching. I'm going to do that concept. I'll show it to you in the future because I'm going to deviate other places too. I know. Now that I have this done, I want to flip it so that the right side is facing out like this. Okay. Isn't that the cutest little pucker you ever saw? <laughs> Let's begin round number two. Okay, round number two. Take this strand and create a slip knot. We're going to do a standing double crochet instead of attaching it, chain three, and then do what you need to do. I want you to do a standing double crochet. It'll look nicer. And I want you to pick a spot. This is kind of where we joined it. You see how it looks a little abnormal? So you can tell where that is. And I want you to pick the one right before it. And you're going to go right in. Okay, that's where you're going to go. But wait, there's more. To do a standing double, you are going to wrap the hook once, pinch it with your finger, this finger, so it doesn't unspin, and then go into that spot I told you about. And then yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two, and then pull through two. This leaves the tail at the top instead of the bottom, and we're gonna deal with that later. In the same one, we're going to apply two more double crochet. We have one and two, but we're not done with that stitch yet. I know. So chain two and in the same stitch, three more double crochet. So with the standing double crochet and two into the first time, then chain two and, and then three this time, you're creating like a cluster. And if, if I could just get my stitch in there, I'd be even happier. <laughs> if all else fails, fake it. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You're going to chain one and you're going to skip the next chain, but here's, here's what I'm going to tell you. So I would count it back this way. You have to skip one before you come back into this. So you're going to skip this one. So this will be a stitch. Skip this one. This will be a stitch. Skip this one. This is your next stitch. I know. So then you're going to put in three double crochets there. So if you're ever unsure, count it backward like that, and then you'll nail it every time without it looking abnormal. Then you're gonna chain one. So you're skipping one, go to the next one. So in this next one, you're gonna put three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. What you're doing is that these spots that you're putting in right now is a shoulder. So we started with a shoulder, we're coming across the, either the back or the front, it doesn't matter. Um, but the shoulders are made up of three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the same stitch. Rocket science, I know. So chain one, skip the next one, and you're gonna go into this one here, it's your last one, and that one's just gonna be three single crochet. but wait, there's more. <laughs> so I want you, at this point, you got to chain one. Technically, you would slip stitch it, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it look obvious. I have problems. So I'm just going to pull that up, and I'm going to put that into a tapestry needle. This will be the last time I show you I'm doing this, and then the rest of it, I'm just going to say, do your magic. Okay, so then what you're going to do is go across like that, just pull it closer so you can see it. And you're going to come into the same stitch that came out of. And you want to favor the back. So you're looking at the good side. So favor the back. So just turn it over. And just go in some stitch work on the back side. And when you pull on it, you want to pull on it so it looks like the same distance as the rest of these. Okay. So just. Okay. And then you're going to go back. And at some point, you're gonna to have to tie a knot here so that it'll capture and not unravel on you. 
So I'll do that now. Whoops, I was about to do it. But now I'm weaving it in like a million times, so I probably don't need to anymore. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. But wait, there's more. I know, annoying me today. See this one that you did with the standing? You're gonna have to secure that too. And the reason why we did that is that chain three never looks like a double crochet. I don't care who you think you are. It never looks like it. It always looks weird to me. So this is a way, especially on such a project like this that may be hanging from a Christmas tree or, or somewhere, that you'll always see it. And especially as a crocheter, you're going to say, oh my God, look at that. And that's when you got to call and cancel Christmas. Just ask the cranks. Cancel Christmas. Oh my God, it's the end of the world. Okay, so you're going to do that. So now you're going to trim. And voila. So you have what appears to be like a diamond shape. So these are your shoulders, front or back, it depends. But I want you to always favor now the same side of joining the yarn when the body is so that the seam line always stays at the back. Okay, so we'll assume that this is the back going forward. Okay, we're ready for the next color. I already got my slip knot done and I'm going to do my standing double crochet. So this is where the seam line is. I'm gonna pick here. This is the chain two that is in between the clusters. Okay, so right above the shoulder, and that's where it's asking us to start. So, in, okay, so that's where I'm gonna go. So let me just pull that out and do it as a standing double. So just pinch, wrap, and in. You can go up over top of the straggler too if that makes you even happier. You still have to secure it in though. Okay, so you're just gonna, you can tug on it. And then this here stitch, you're going to put two more double crochet. And then you're going to chain two. And then three more double crochet into that same one. So with the standing and the two double crochet, that gives you the number three. And then you're chaining two for the gap space. And then three double crochet. Now, you know that this is the shoulder, so you won't be doing this until you get to the other shoulder. So chain one to start, and you're going to come into the next space and put three double crochet in there. So we have one, two, three, chain one, and go to the next space and put three more double crochet. So we have one, two, three, then you're going to chain one and then this is the shoulder so you'll start off with three double crochet first so we have one two three chain two and then three more double crochet in the same shoulder then chain one and come down the opposite side here. So you're just gonna put three double crochet here. So you're thinking, well, when does this thing turn into a sweater? Hold your horses. So we're just coming down what, what we already know. So this is the last one. So I'm gonna do my little magic join trick um, to join it, to keep that seam line hidden as much as possible. So just chain one trim that yarn, do your magic with the tapestry hook if you choose to. And if you don't, apparently I can't reach through a screen and fix your clock. <laughs> so please uh, secure this in and we'll be back in just a moment to start round number four. Okay, so now on number four, this is when we're gonna start shaping it to a sweater. So here's your shoulders and good luck putting your head through that. <laughs> so what I wanna do is that I wanna, this is the good side and I wanna flip it. This is where I joined right here. Then we're gonna flip it and we're going to be on the wrong side starting where that join is and we're going to start with the standing double crochet shocker okay so let's do that so we're going to join it right where you did the, the connection and then you're going to so that was the standing double so put in two more double crochets in here this round, we're going to fold this thing so it does form the sweater shape. So let's get rid of this out of the way. We'll deal with that later. So you'll chain one and you're gonna come into the next space and put three double crochet in. So one, two, three. Chain one, 
put three or double crochet in here. And wait, there's more. <laughs> so you're gonna chain one. I want you to ignore the shoulder and I want you to just to jump over here. This is going to be like, remember those 80s shoulders pad that women used to have? Oh, they may still have it, who knows? And uh, in their jackets. So right here, you're gonna jump here and you're gonna put in three double crochet. Am I aging myself with shoulder pads? I don't know. I age myself to know who Carol Burnett is because apparently the new generation has no idea. Best comedian of all time. So chain one and go to the next one and put three double crochet in. Chain one, put three double crochet in the next one. And after this, once my thumb gets out of the way, you'll see it. You are going to run into the shoulder, so you don't want to mess with the shoulder. So you're just going to chain one and you're going to join it to over here. And that's what you're going to do. So let me just quickly show you that. So pulling it up, get your tapestry needle because today is the best day of your life. So just going to come across, join it to the first one. And so just ignore the shoulder, let it go over. So you can see the shoulders are now hanging out. And you want to come back to where you came from. It's a bit fiddly, right? All this amigurumi stuff is usually. Okay, and then you're just going to attach it like you have been. So just attach it and that's what it would look like. And I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so everything is attached and now voila, there is your shoulders here. So if you want to put out your fingers, there's an arm and then the, the other one here. So let's start the fifth round. The fifth round, we want to look at it from the right side facing out. So we're going to start right where the join was made. Okay, so we're going to come at it from this point of view. And I also want to do my standing double in that spot. Okay, so I'm just going to join it with a standing double. And then I want to put two more double crochet in there. So we're ignoring the shoulders completely at this point because we're done with that. Chain one and then in each of these chain one spots put in three double crochet. And then chain one to jump to the next spot and keep doing that around. Okay, chain one, jump. Chain one to jump. So the colors are pretty what, endless on these things. So chain one to jump. And what do you think I'm going to do for a join? Mm -hmm. You know me well. So I'll chain one and then prepare that to join and I'll join it with my tapestry needle and be right back. This is, this was the fifth round. And now it says for the six, you want to follow to the, to the wrong side. So this is the good side. So right where the join is, is exactly where you want to start, but you want to start on the wrong side. Okay. And then you're just going to do your standing double. If you choose to do it that way, it's up to you. And then you're just going to do exactly what you just did. Okay. So you got your first one in chain one and then just three single or three doubles in the next uh, space, chain one and do that all the way around. So it's exactly what you just did with the white or with the cream color. And please do this all the way around. I'll be right back. Coming all the way around here on the sixth one. And then I want to join it with my tapestry needle and I'll be right back for seven and eight. Okay, number seven. So seven and eight are going to be both done on the right hand side. So right where the join was, that's where you're going to start. Or the right side, I should say. And then that's where you're going to join. So then just put in three doubles, basically, in every space as you go around. So 
So starting off with the standing and then um, chain one and then jump to the next space and etc. So go all the way around. This is round number seven. So at the end of number seven, this is the second time I'm making the sweater. I'm a lot faster because I'm not as weary as I was. Like I'm more confident on the pattern. So just so you know, if you feel like you're struggling in the first one, that it makes you not want to do anymore, I'm finding the second one's a lot easier. Let's join this and then we'll do our last round together. So finally, we're doing the very bottom. So with the right side facing out, and I'm gonna change the instructions again. So right where you did the join, we're gonna do a standing single crochet. So how you do that is that you put it onto the hook like we have been. We don't wrap it before it goes into the hole. So you just go in and yarn over, pull through, and see the two, pull through the two. You can tug on this just to tighten it a bit. So each stitch gets a single crochet and each uh, chain one space gets a single crochet. So everybody gets something, okay? And then you can just go around like that. And this will conclude then the base. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and the final join, I'm still gonna do my tapestry. Okay, and I want it to look good. And we might as well, right, we've gotten this far so far. So join it and let's move on. We're gonna start doing sleeves after this. Let's begin to do the sleeves. So I'm gonna deviate, I'm gonna do my standing double and right where the chain two is, that's part of the, the shoulder, that's where you wanna join. So I'm going to do my double. Okay, it's the standing double. And then two more double crochets in there. Noticing that this color is the same as the original color that I used here the first time that I went around without the shoulder. And it will look like it belongs together. That's why I'm doing that. So now you're gonna chain one and you're gonna to come to this connection spot right here and you're gonna put in three double crochet. Chain one and keep on turning it and come to the other connection spot right here on the other side of the, of the shoulder and put in your double crochet there. So it makes it look like the yoke of the sweater is following it around to the sleeves. So chain one and then we're gonna join. So you can join it and I'll be right back in a second. So I'm putting on the other one while I'm here at the same spot just because I remember the steps. You might be able to find that being helpful as well. Instead of doing one complete sleeve, if you're changing up the colors like this, it may be a little bit easier for you to be able to match. And I'll be right back again. So let's do the next round. So you have to go from the wrong side now, right where this is, and I'm gonna suggest to you that you go under the armpit. Okay, so you have to go to the wrong side, so you have to look at it from this perspective and go in, and you have to do your standing double. And you're gonna go right into the chain one space. And you're essentially just doing circles now of the same stitch work going around and around and around. So once the first one's in, just chain one and then jump to the next space. And you're putting three double crochets in those as well. And what I'm deciding is that the remaining of the sweater has the same sleeves, and I may just change the cuffs um, right at the end. So if you don't want to change the colors as much as the pattern, you don't, you don't have to, it's up to you. So if you're not going to change the color, just chain one and then slip stitch. And that was the second round. And it says to um, turn your work and you're gonna come back and look at it from the outside again, so they're the wrong side, and you're going to start immediately right into this space right here. So you're just gonna just slip stitch over, chain three, and double crochet in. So now I'm breaking my own rules. I know. So then chain one, and then go to the next space. So you're gonna find like you're gonna be using a lot of time just to change the colors. 
So if you want to do solid colors, that's up to you. Okay, chain one. And as I said, I'm going to keep the color, so I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Okay, and then I'm going to turn my work back to the wrong side. So I'm looking at it from this perspective. Slip stitch in the space. Chain three. And so it doesn't say to do that, so I'm just using my experience. And you probably have great experience too. Chain one and coming back around. At the end of the fourth, you're just going to chain one and then just slip stitch it or do, do that magic work. So I'm going to do the magic work and then I'm going to show you the fifth round, which will be the final. Finally, round number five. So we're going to look at the wrong side here. So you're going to come in here. Okay. And then you're going to just join it with the standing single that I already showed you before. And so every double crochet gets a stitch. And then every chain one space also gets a stitch very much like the base that we had started with. So just kind of peel back things. So the reason why they're asking us to do uh, the wrong side right at the end is that the wrong side naturally uh, kind of folds into itself. And so if you do the right side facing out, what happens is that the end of the sleeve will kind of like bell out. So this is going to like kind of buckle in inward. And it does a really good look when you do that. Okay, so you're going to come all the way around. And at the end, what am I going to do? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got this far. I'm going to use my tapestry needle and finish that off. So now you just have to finish the other sleeve and get it done. And you're going to write your shape things and etc. And then we're going to cover the loop. So if once you're ready for the loop, it says to cut a strand about seven inches. And you can match it to the actual sweater itself. And then just tie it here. So let's show you a weaver's knot. So just go over and put this one around. And then take this one here, go over and back through underneath. This is a weaver's knot. This is how they do it at the, at the yarn companies. And you're going to pull through like this. This is permanent. This is why those strands, well, you may have different experiences than me, but um, that's why they have a hard time coming out of the ball. You're going to cut it nice and short. Now, I want you to use your crochet hook. And all you're just going to do is just match it. And just coming in. Like this and pull through. And do you see where that is? What you want to do is you want to kind of just favor that so it comes in behind. So you have a nice loop coming up. Like that. So it might be a little bit long, but you know what I'm saying. So it's a really neat idea and you can hang it and enjoy it. So that's it for today and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.